installation, site-specific durational performance with diverse roles as host, producer, mentor, and collaborator. Tolentino is deeply influenced by her expand, extensive, extensive experience as caregiver, Eastern and aquatic body worker, a highly disciplined contemporary dancer, and as proprietor of Plea Club in New York City. Her Woo! diverse and explanatory duet solo practice includes installation, dance for camera, durational performance, engaging improvisation, one-to-one -one score, score making of influence, including blood, tears, and honey. Thank you very Woo! much for being here. Thanks so much. Um, um, it's it's. I I started thinking about how to um, start talking, and of course, Hunter completely destabilized me by reminding me of many things. But um, I think the main thing that I want to talk about with my work is that um, there's something that I felt I learned really early on as as a dancer and also an activist. Um, there were just some, some, um, sorry, sinners. Um, there was just some um, way that my my life was working. So, you know, when Ray was in the hospital, I would be in, on the late shift, and then I would stay as late as I possibly could, and it, it always worked out because when I took the sort of three to ten or you know whatever ten spot, I could then also run the click club before that and then I could come from rehearsal and then after that we, before that I would go to Kinko's to set up for the club and and there was this sort of cycle of um, kind of multiplicity and I felt like um, my um, the, I could talk about my role and uh, or my feelings and my experience as an activist but more what it was like to be asked on this really subtle a very quiet way to please come be with me and it, it, during these last months or please I would like it to be you that would just stay with me and do a certain kind of touch or a certain kind of body work or a certain kind of reading and and I it was almost like I had all of these secrets um, as well I worked with David Rousseff um, his dance company and for, uh, for probably the first three years I was the only person that he allowed um, the knowledge that he was HIV positive because we was sort of spending the time uh, working with me on the side to figure out how he can become more visible and more um, more just freer about his status and the way that he and how, and also help him figure out what he was doing that was showing already but then he just needed to be able to use words um, I think there's something in my work that um, is always um, trying to destabilize or to allow the body to show itself as it is, which is it's completely fragile. Um, there, you know, I know there's like a very big interest in the core and dancing, and and I think that I was really interested in what the how the body reacts and how it changes and how it's changing in performance all the time. Um, so not so as to not be thinking about it as in terms of sculpture, but really in terms of um, a moving, active, receptive body that um, might be able to transform ideas um, and ideas of choreography or ideas of, um, of loss and grief, which is sort of pouring through my work as part of, as part of it because I wasn't using words. Um, one of the things that happened early on, I thought, was that um, the way that I was watching myself use words in activism um, was in terms of advocacy. So I had a certain kind of role that I knew or I was learning. Um, and then there was also this other kind of advocacy that I could um, participate, for example, with uh, David's presenters around the world when we were traveling internationally and people were concerned about safe sex partnering. Or uh, once David did come out as being HIV positive, they were very concerned about, you know, there was so much early concern and um, unwieldy um, understanding. And um, at the time, uh, also, 
I was uh, performing um, in nightclubs. We had the Click Club. I was running parallel with John and Alessandro with Pork and Meat, um, Aldo Hernandez's Meat. And we were developing and building in these spaces and working kind of in this underground space that was connected to Club Fuck in, in, uh, in Los Angeles. And then I started working with Ron Athey. And once um, Ron and I kind of came together, um, it seemed really important. I mean, it was completely important to me that the world was seeing his work. And through the access that I had through the dance company, I was able to talk to two very key figures, uh, Mark Russell from PS122 and John Kalaki from the Walker Art Center, and start to create a dialogue about what this work was actually doing, um, how the use of, of body flu or fluids and SM and sort of our other, our real lives, our other gay people lives, <laughs> um, how they were working um, and making impacts on all of us, one as release, but also as um, also a, sta a statement, as camaraderie, um, there was a sobriety, there were so many things that were really supporting HIV at this time in our community. So I felt that um, one of the things that was my early kind of connection was sort of in line with um, Diamanda, who's a dear friend of ours, who also collaborated on um, some of the sound music in my work. She um, would also, you know, she has the, the tattoo that my girlfriend at the time tattooed on her that said, we are all HIV positive. And I felt like this was the beginning of me understanding that I did have a voice in this, in this area. And um, so I felt that being a producer and having this kind of mind of product, like, I was just organized, I don't know, I'm built that way. And this way of um, supporting Ron and um, really transforming, I was really part of the, the co-director of the early work, taking some of this kind of wild, crazy thing that was happening um, sort of in the club scene, and we were able to look at it um, theatrically and give it time, which is a huge element in the way that um, I worked, and I found that that's how it started, was working with endurance. Um, I just am going to show a few photographs of Pigpen, who also is sort of the other revered St. Sebastian in the work. Um, and this is us working together um, back in the 90s. Um, we now work together as performance partners, so it's really exciting for us. We sort of have 20 years um, of history plus five years of some other history. <laughs> So now, um, I'm just going to flip through this because I know everyone knows all so much about these images, but I just want to make sure that they show up in the world again. Yes. Um, so one of the things about my work and also my practice is I'm a very slow maker, um, and a lot of the work that I do tends to sort of take a little bit of a, I don't know, it's a, maybe a quieter practice. It's not... Um, I wish I was a different kind of person, and so like I could do the splits, and I could have great costumes, but it's sort of not really how my practice works, and I feel like what I've always been um, working towards is, um, you know, I, I, we always say it over and over again, we were never actually meant to be 30, and so there was a time when we lived like we're never going to be 30. And then we became 31, and now we're 100. <laughs> it's very hard to know what to do with yourself. And suddenly I realized that there was other things to say, but I still feel <laughs> comfortable um, sort of working kind of in the mask. Um, early work, I'm just going to flip through these, was um, just in terms of learning about duration. Um, I felt that enduring was our job, and um, learning to get through the time was something that we had to learn to articulate and also value, and also not sort of slip away from because it's so awkward to talk about these dreadful things all the time, these terrible losses. They're, they're, our lives didn't make any sense, so when you would talk about them, they sounded even more like I felt like I was telling a fib. Um, so this, um, I'm just sort of flipping through sort of early, early works. Um, but a lot of my work does show a sort of a silencing. Um, in <clears throat> in um, it, one of the, the ways that I feel like I'm able to express um, sort of the frustration that I was experiencing and that my friends were experiencing, that you know people who were sick were experiencing, we were all just 
it was like a tongue tie. It was like there was a pain to what we were um, trying to work with. And I felt that because of the work with the body, um, there might be ways that we could move, move through it. And my very first work was um, uh, called Mestiza, Que Bonitos Ojos Tennis. And um, this work used um, the five element theory in Chinese medicine, which was sort of running concurrently with my training, um, to sort of help me start to find ways to, to deal with this loss. Um, I'm just going to flip through very quickly an important piece um, that was hosted by participant Leah Ganglitano, and I felt that this work was a way for me to also start to articulate this idea of a, uh, this sort of secret touch, this way that maybe we could give agency to the audience rather than for like a presentational format. And this work was done, um, it was a one-to-one -one performance where you would choose your time that you could arrive and you would choose the music that you'll hear and um, you'd be able to move around the room as you, as you wished. And the performance um, integrated movement, but it was also collecting information about the participant, the viewer. And um, in the end, there's a, a timer that would go on in the last few minutes of the performance. And I would flip the timer, the, the egg timer, just to sort of talk about this limited time that we have together. And magically, the song that you chose would come on. And you know, you have already a relationship to this song. And I would now have this information about you, about the way that we were interacting and what, how you didn't want me to come near you, or you were miming with me, or whatever our experience was, to this real experience we were having together. Um, I would just sort of play it back through your song, um, through my body's experience of you, um, of, the, of the participant. And then when the timer went out, our time was up, and the thing would close down, and I did a performance um, every hour on the hour, or every half an hour, um, resetting the piece, and it, this started this durational kind of work that just said we, we collect, we do it all over again, and then we would start fresh, and it was this incredible chance to learn as a performer as well um, how to start fresh, and no matter what was experienced in that minutes before, that we would start again. I'm just gonna, I know I think I'm, uh, I have too many slides here. So there is a 24 hour performance where we just slow dance together. You're um, offered to slow dance in this um, uh, mirrored, mirrored bar, ballroom, um, barefoot with me on grass. Um, just some sort of basic ways of finding ideas of intimacy, um, a fall, like falling into each other's boundaries, um, and also negotiating a female body. Um, this work is um, a, a piece that I call Stringhead, and it's a work that, <coughs> again, works with a mask, but also with some difficult materials. And I allow the, um, I was thinking in this way that <coughs> the, um, the material um, was constantly grating at my body, and um, but it, my, it was my body that was actually doing it to it. So there, there was sort of, sort of foreclosing um, the experience, but also trying to unravel from it and allow that to be part of the reveal of um, the performance. Um, sort of just finally, I think it's, it, I feel like um, the use of time in my work is a way of sort of like a, I know, I think of it like an ectoplasm or something, like this way that I'm a channel and there's this like weird shit that is coming out and I'm not quite sure always what it is or how I'm doing it. But this work um, in the desert, uh, sort of just with plastic and wind, was uh, like a way of manage, like the management of this plastic um, that is unmanageable and ends up for me very much kind of a, a symbol. Um, of, of the work. Should I finish? Thank you so much. Thank you.